Right, we have our guests already in studio. We are holding court with them and we continue to hear and pick their minds on this and a raft of other issues, of course, regarding security as well. Let's begin with you, Captain Wanderi. We go to Ethiopia, we, where we had this particular development story or developing story of the 16 people who were put to, to prison because they're, you know, enemy of a state. They were so, it is said that actually, or it is alleged, that they were actually trying to form another state in Ethiopia. Given what we know about Ethiopia, do you think they will survive in those prisons? Uh, before we get into the issue of the, the situation uh, or the, the situation of the prisons and uh, detention in Ethiopia, let's, it's, it's, it's uh, a bit of uh, a contradiction that Ethiopia, the, gov the federal government is accusing these people of trying to create a separate state. Ethiopia is already a federal state. Oromia does exist as one of the uh, 10 fed uh, 15 federal regions of Ethiopia. Uh, what there has been is that Ethiopia uh, states are created on the basis of ethnicity, pure ethnicity. Mm -hmm. And there seems to be a lot of tensions between the various ethnic groups. Oromia being the largest region and as well as the region with the highest population of the Oromo people who speak uh, the same language as our Borana people. Mm -hmm. And this separatist movement in Ethiopia has persisted, not, it didn't begin today, it began way back in 1962 uh, when uh, the former emperor, the late emperor Haile Selassie, uh, then uh, uh, what he did is that he he actually abolished the provincial uh, what were called the ras the kings or the various tribes mm -hmm. in in the regions and therefore separatist movement began but that's uh, that's it and done since the 1962 and after the push of 1974 the takeover by the dag mm -hmm. and the military council the provisional military council ethiopia has become a very repressive state in fact you wouldn't see a separation of state where you have institutions of government, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary being independent. It's one and the same thing. And you have to look at it from the way they handle their affairs. Mm -hmm. It's essentially a very close society. Ethiopia hardly has any international media focusing on them. In fact, the, 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 it is very difficult to even get news there if you are not a local. Mm -hmm. So you can see we had recently even a Kenyan who was jailed in that country. And he could not even get, a, even our own people could not a, get access to him. And uh, you see, we the same thing is happening to our brothers in the Sudan, in South Sudan. Yes. That uh, the prison conditions in these states, in states that have emerged from a situation of war and conflict, the human rights and the respect for uh, for political freedoms is very low. So it is very sad uh, that uh, even as we discuss political rights and human rights in Africa, we have then countries like South Sudan, we have Ethiopia, which continue to be very repressive on their own citizens. And not only their own citizens, but also visitors from other countries in Africa. So it will, be, it will not be hard easy for them, mm -hmm. because uh, that country has that phobia of always having attacks. Thank you. And uh, and uh, and uh, rebellions. Thank you. Let's hear from Dr. Mustafa, especially on the issue of Ethiopia, but the issue of Scotland. You know, this will be the second referendum as well, and it seems yes, uh, a lot of thought, uh, a lot of the states around uh, the UK now they have this particular fatigue with uh, the Brexit issue. Do you think this particular fo uh, time for this will sell through? P because we saw the first time it never actually sell through, but this time it seems yes, there's a bigger reason why they should be out of. Uh, of, of the UK. Yeah, it seems Nicola is, is, uh, is seizing the opportunity at this point because uh, 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 Scotland uh, has been, uh, uh, is, and continues to be pro-EU, mm -hmm. and yet uh, Britain pulled out of uh, 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 the EU, and that uh, this is an opportune moment if a referendum is going to succeed, then it's going to be. Now, most Scottish people still prefer and uh, are really uh, 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 telling uh, uh, England and Wales uh, uh, um, why did they really have to break out or leave the, the EU. And therefore, for Nicholas Strajan, this is the right moment, uh, the, the, the ripe moment to actually have this referendum and uh, will most likely succeed. Uh, last time it failed by just a few percentage points. Uh, um, and uh, Scotland are very nationalistic people. They've always wanted to have their country back. And uh, it looks like that the, the, the nationalists uh, in Scotland are going ahead. And if they succeed, of course, they are going to rejoin, or rather they are going to uh, make sure that Scotland uh, is part of the EU. Right. 
Dr. Papolos. Essentially, I think the United Kingdom will be four countries. We shall have Scotland, we shall have Northern Ireland, we shall have England, we shall have Wales. Because when you are in, uh, in, in London, as you go to, to Cardiff, when you are crossing and leaving England, you feel you are actually leaving England. Mm -hmm. You are now going to Wales. Mm -hmm. Different language, different culture. And I, I think the Queen has tried to unify them, but I think they are now seeing it differently. Because even when we sit for exams in Wales, uh, the exam is written in Welsh and in English. So you find they, they want to have a lot of independence. So eventually, they will split into four, and then the, 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 the word United Kingdom will cease. All right, thank you. <laughs> Let's hear from uh, Professor Naomi Dambo on Trumpism and uh, this particular act right now that uh, the executive order from the president, which is now sort of, you know, retracting back on the Paris Agreement, mm. especially on the climate change. We saw earlier the Obamacare, uh, he was defeated with that. I think uh, he yes. was really wanted to repeal yes. uh, and replace the Obamacare, but I think also the Republicans were really against it as well. So is he trying also to, you know, have this isolation, isolationist agenda uh, really coming to fall? Uh, the bar from uh, uh, Kenya and African standpoint, uh, the U.S. has been um, uh, a force uh, to reckon with uh, uh, since the Second World War, particularly leading in so many uh, spaces. First, it's the most powerful country militarily. Uh, secondly, the most, uh, uh, the richest country in the world. And implication for what the President of the United States uh, and his ideology and what comes out has really serious world implication. For instance, um, there is, uh, because of his uh, uh, constant um, uh, words that are uh, uh, never been heard of in America about religion and everything, someone went to, uh, uh, to a mosque in, in Ohio, uh, broke the door, and threw the Bible in, inside, the, inside the mosque. Uh, this kind of thing is going to happen. We saw what happened with the... Uh, uh, with the Jewish cemetery. Uh, this kind of thing has not been seen in America since the 60s. But we are going to see a number of very serious implications for the world. Uh, the issue of climate change has far-reaching impact in the world today. We are seeing it in terms of rain pattern in Africa right now. And for the world, for anyone, in the role of president of the United States and to come in and say that, uh, no, 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 we are going to pro continue producing coal. Uh, when America's the, the, the solar system, all other uh, system, which can replace uh, so, uh, uh, coal and then hire more, uh, create more employment. You know, so. so this is not the person who's, who's thinking uh, correctly and rationally. Thank you. And all of us must count. Thank you. I'll be remiss, of course, if not to discuss what is really happening in, in Congo. We're strapped for time. But as we're closing right now, uh, the issue of Namanga, and of course, we had yes. the Tanzanian government's yeah. uh, directive to evict persons who do not have relevant paperwork, and which is still splitting families, despite the street volatility at the Kenya Tanzania border of Namanga having cooled off. Concerns are still alight over the future of his families and their livelihoods. We are not able to play right now because of, of time. But I want us just to uh, focus a bit on this particular row is developing briefly, 30 seconds each as we are closing. And uh, I think next week we'll pick up on what is really happening in Congo, where we had 40 uh, you know, police uh, being decapitated in the forest as well. Briefly, let's begin with you, 30 seconds, sir. Nibal, uh, it's, it's very sad. Magufuli, President uh, John Magufuli is turning out to be the Donald Trump of Africa. And sadly so. He is thinking inward. He is not thinking uh, globally. Tanzania is not a very developed economy. Whereas Kenya has more development in terms of technology and industries, yes. Tanzania has absolute comparative national advantage in terms of having more arable land, 
and they can produce more food than us. Now we are importing a lot of fruits right here in our market from their country. Mm -hmm. But Magufuli doesn't see that. What he's seeing, he's seeing the few Kenyans who work there, who uh, deal in subsistence, uh, uh, in subsistence uh, uh, business or uh, farming as nuisance. Mm -hmm. And this is sad because we are talking about globalization, regional integration, and we have a president who then thinks that separating families is the solution. It is wrong. He's not giving solution, a solution to the Tanzanians. Neither is he working towards regional integration. In fact, if he moves on this way, mm -hmm. then the current EAC, in fact, one of the things the, pre the other president should do mm -hmm. is simply move the headquarters of EAC from Arusha. We can take it to Kisumu. It is more central in East Africa because he doesn't seem to believe in the spirit of regional integration and one East Africa. All right, uh, Dr. Paul Smashira. Uh, when, when you talked about Congo and the 50 police officers who were killed, it uh, fast forward came to Kenya when our 45 police officers were killed in Sugutafari. Mm -hmm. So the same scenario applies. When it goes to the Nambanga border, Pombe Makufuri is behaving arrogantly. He is be being a divider. Instead of bringing uh, Africans together, he is trying to be a divider. He thinks Tanzania is more important than other countries. I'm telling him, you are not important. Kenya is more important than you. So don't be a divider. Don't create a tension within East African community. All right. Let's hear from Dr. Mustafa. Yeah, I think there is a need to have, uh, there is need for our leaders to be more visionary. Uh, you know, a president in Tanzania focusing <coughs> on such petty issues uh, uh, lacks the vision to, to uh, um, to work with the other leaders in the region to make sure that the East African community is going to be successful. Again, for ca the case of uh, Congo, this is really sad, unfortunate situation. And uh, the, the, the leaders in the region need to l tell Kabila that uh, he is overstaying his time mm -hmm. uh, in, in office. And he should have called elections in December. He is not. He is in office illegally. And this is going to cost not just Congo, but is still an, an, a, a, a Congo relapsing back into a, a failed uh, state is going to affect the security of the countries in the region. Right, and uh, that we know also that particular peace process has been scuppered right now because also the clergy from uh, the Catholic Church they have pulled away from that particular uh, peace talk. So what does it portend as also uh, we are seeking peace in Congo uh, as Africa Union as well? Uh, let's hear. Let's hear from. Uh, Captain Wanderi, right? Briefly, I was winding up. Yeah, uh, you see, the, the, um, the problems in the Congo uh, is that uh, as Kabila continues to hold on to power uh, beyond his mandate, he's reviving the old separatist uh, ideology in Katanga and Kasai region. And uh, after, since the politicians in Congo don't seem to agree, the church seems to be the only unifying factor because it ties up everybody, in, in, irrespective of their nationalities and ethnic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So it is sad that the church is withdrawing because as we are talking, con killings are continuing in central Kasai. 400 people have died since August. 200,000 have been displaced. And if you cannot even attack the, the religious organizations and uh, engage in brickmanship on both sides, and then, right. and then expect the church to continue to participate in a forum where everybody is preaching violence and Thank killing. You. Thank you.